Welcome to CBTSport.net Game of the Week. Bringing you high school, college, amateur, semi-pro and professional sports video from right here in central Vermont. Over a decade of local central Vermont sports video action. Welcome everybody here to the uh, Central Vermont Civic Center as we are just about underway for some high school girls hockey. The U32 Raiders facing off against the Burn Burton Bulldog Academy. The Bulldogs coming a long way for a beautiful Saturday in December. The matchup between the Bulldogs and the Raiders. Some early season high school hockey. The Raiders, a younger team looking to get their foot in the door early going on. And this is a very talented Burn Burton excuse me, Burt and Burt and Roster that will look to come out, be aggressive on the boards and really work their way around into the puck. And, well, dare I say, there is uh, somebody up here with me. I'm sorry, don't yell at me yet, just yet here, but a former U32 Raider who uh, wore the, the hockey jersey well, very well, the star, a stud, whatever you want to say, Caitlin Fielder up here with us today. Caitlin, first things first, how you doing today? I'm good. Good, good, good. Well, we uh, we we got the word from mom that it was okay to drag you up here. I'm sorry, but I, I got a, a feeling that you're going to fit along with us just fine. And uh, if you had to say one thing that this young team for U32 has to do tonight to come out here against Burn Burton, what does this team have to do early to get a win here today? Um, I would say that they need to crash the net to get those rebounds. Cleaning up the rebounds, definitely a big thing. We know that, uh, well, there's, uh, so we see your dad down there, you know, the head coach, Larry Smith, also down there for the Raiders. On the flip side, the head coach is Edward Lewicki III. And we will have uh, some lineups and things to bring you momentarily. But for now, we'll step aside. Puck drop coming your way in just a few minutes between Burton Burton and the U32 Raiders on CBTSport.net.
Welcome back to the Civic Center here in East Montpelier, Vermont. Noel McLean and Caitlin Fielder rocking with you high above the rink for some high school girls varsity hockey. And we are very happy to bring you this presentation here on CVTSport.net. The officials making sure that all the goals are in their proper positions. The ice is out there looking fresh and uh, well, we talked about your dad a few moments ago out there in the pink hat, shaking the officials' hands. Caitlin, uh, he's been an assistant for a while. You had him as, a, as an assistant coach, correct? Yeah, he started my eighth grade year. So I was a manager for the U32 team. And then I had him when I became a freshman. And what did you think about that experience, having your dad as an assistant coach playing hockey? I've never had a parent as a coach, and it's definitely uh, – Interesting at times. <laughs> well, <laughs> we will see what tonight will bring here. Again, the, the Burr and Burton Bulldogs coming in to face off against the U32 Raiders. We'll get you the lineup, says Emily Tringe is going to lose the face off for the Raiders, but here come the Bulldogs immediately. Quick shot and uh, knocked away by the goalkeeper for the Raiders in the net right now, Adeline Croto. Raiders behind their own net. Tringe with the puck. She's going to bring it over towards the blue line on the Raiders' side. Nice move across, across the uh, middle ice there. Knocked away by Burn Burin. Very quick pace so far. This one, we'll see if either team can get on the board early. Here's a cross-court pass, but take it away immediately on the far side. That's Emily Trench, and excuse me, on the other one, it was Hannah Dr Drury before that. Getting my 21 and 22 numbers mixed up. My apologies. And Caitlin, to get on the board early for a team, how crucial is that in the game of hockey to get on there and try and get a, a, a quick score? Um, I say it's pretty crucial because you never know what can happen the rest of the game. Always take the opportunities you have. That one skipped around the boards here for Burren Burren. Right in front of that shot, second chance opportunity and a glove save, whistle blows. Nice job there by Adeline Croto. She is the goalkeeper for the Raiders. The defenders tonight, Hannah Drury, as well as Grace Lagerstead. And also Peyton Allen playing some forward and defense. We'll see what she can do tonight. Raiders win the faceoff, but immediately taken back by Burn Burren. And if you are looking online at the roster, just something to note, number four, Peyton Allen is now number 23. Thank you to Caitlin Fielder for uh, giving us that piece of information. Raiders across the midline, looking for some options. Pucks kept around off the boards on the left side. Loose down there, fighting for it. Now comes loose. Burn Burton controls it. Here they come into the Raiders zone. Still on the stick now of Burn Burton. This is going to be an opportunity. The keeper, Croto, lets it go around the far side. Coming up the ice on that one was Maya Duncan. And now it's Edwards battling with the puck. Peyton Allen, though. Oh, look out. Big collision. Refs are going to let it play on. And now on the far side, a chance for the Raiders possibly, but knocked away. Good defense there. It was Tringe on the attack. Second chance opportunity. And a glove save there for the Burr and Burton Bulldogs on the far side. And so far, no opportunities yet, Kaylin, for those second chance to Opportunities that you said were going to be crucial, taking advantage of every opportunity. I know we've seen you certainly slot your fair share of second chance opportunities. And, you know, talk about the positioning. How much of that is being able to read where that puck is going to go on a second chance shot? Um, you got to, like, throughout, like, your years of hockey, like, you understand how, like, it can come off the goalie pads weird, but, like, typically you know if it comes off the right or the left which way it's going to go. So you kind of just have to read it as a shot comes off. Fair enough. As a man that did not play hockey myself, uh, at least not until I tried to play intramural hockey at the University of Rhode Island and 
Well, that went probably exactly how you would think it would go. I live to tell the tale. That's about all that matters. Luckily, you know, big enough to stand my own ground a little bit, you know. But, man, a lot of credit to the guys and girls that can go out there and skate at a game pace. It is a little different than your Curtis Pond Pond Hockey. Yeah, this is a local station, so I'll keep it with the local reference. <laughs> and, uh, well, Caitlin, you've been out there a couple times with, with me at some of those. Uh, you know, I think I'm a pond hockey legend. But when it comes to real hockey, forget about it. My <laughs> game can go down the train. Face off right in front of the Raiders. That shot on goal. Nice save, Croto. Nice job to cover it up. Croto already with at least three saves credited, credited to her name. And we'll go right back to that left face-off circle. The Chloe Pembroke doing things for the Raiders. And she's going to win the face-off. Nice job there. Now with the puck on the far side, it's Grace Lagerstedt. Kicked away. Now coming away. Burn Burton. Here's a shot on net. No good, though. Croto again with the save. Nice job there to keep things tight it was Maya Duncan credited with that shot attempt and now Pembroke skips it away from the net still into the Raiders zone though off the boards Burn Burton tried to go back inside with it and really neither team in control of possession for very long here nice pass along the boards to Gabrielle Crookshank. Crookshank skips it back across the boards. Now fight for the puck. Lagerstead tried to dig it out of there. Somebody's got to get in there. A couple of sticks poking, a couple of skates banging in there. Still puck is deep in that hole somewhere. Not exactly sure. Now it finally, no, still loose. And there it is. We saw it for a moment. Now here's a shot opportunity, but another glove save by Adeline Crona, who's had a very busy start to her game. And Caitlin, that's got to be a, a big thing for you, especially as a defender, or for anyone on your team for that matter, but just to see your goalie come out and make some big stops early going. Yeah, goalie definitely, like, especially Addie these past couple of games, she's had so many saves. And when it's like 1v1s or one on us, which is crucial. That one is going to be all the way down and looking like oh, no icing. No icing. Yep. Nope. I stand corrected. Thought we were going to have our first icing call of the evening. I can't believe that we've even waited this long to see it. But in the first period, 9 to 25 left to go here. The score still knotted at zeros on the scoreboard. Here comes Burn Burton right now, though, and. Knocked away on the far side. Nice job stopping her was Lagerstedt. She's had a couple nice defensive plays for the Raiders. Puck skipped her out on the boards over to the far side. Right in front of us here, it's Pacal. Alexandria Pacal here. Trying to defend the Burn Burton attacker. That's Kaya Pedersen, the senior forward. Bucks get back around off the boards. Doesn't really go anywhere. It was almost a little give and go to herself there. And that's going to go just right behind the, the net of the Raiders. And they're going to try and clear it out of here with no damage done. But look out. Pedersen actually had it there. And now coming out once again to make a glove save is Adeline Crudo. So Crudo again with another nice job just being aware. Always on... Her A game down there in between the posts, the 10 D for the Raiders. Face off one by the Raiders, got caught up in between the legs of the official there a little bit. And once again, it's Maya Duncan for Burn Burton, trying to get it over. And well, there's that official again. And tough break for the official on the near side with this uh, Raider offense, or rather defense, trying to clear it out of the zone here. But the Raiders now do have it into the Burn Burton zone. A nice job of skating with good speed is Crookshank, Gabrielle Crookshank, 
had it and then had it taken away, but now we're going to get a whistle, and there is a Burn Burton player down on the ice. And, uh, well, we're not going to speculate at all here, but... The only thing we can say is we hope that she is okay. Did not see anything from my angle that was obviously uh, so uh, just uh, egregious that you were going to say that's exactly what happened. But for now, we'll take a short break. We, we hope that uh, whoever it is, we can't see a number, is down there, but we hope that she is a-okay. And for now, we'll step aside for a short break. When we come back, 756-00, the score between Burn Burton and U32 and the girls' hockey on cbtsport.net.
Welcome back here, everyone, as we had to step aside for a moment due to an injury timeout. We did see Carmela Livingston skate off on her own power. We won't speculate on any injuries, but we just wish Carmela a speedy recovery and hope that she is A-OK. -okay. Very good to see her skate off under her own feet there. But we will resume play, and it's been a very good start here to this contest. The Raiders do have the puck into Burn Burton territory as a couple of players going to go down shot and a goal for the Raiders. That's Grace's second, like, coast to coast in the past two games to score. All the way from defense. And uh, celebrating with her teammates to put the Raiders on the board first. What a fantastic finish by Lagerstad, who came all the way from the back, as Caitlin just mentioned. And boy, oh boy, is that a momentum booster for the Raiders. That first goal, you always get a little extra boost after that. So the Raiders lead it one to nothing here, and already potentially another opportunity. Puck skipped around the Burn Burton net. Now onto the stick of the Ung Sung hero so far in this contest. Longer stint, skipped around, loose. Lagerstedt still with it now, trying to go inside across the crease with it, but it's knocked away here, and here comes a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. A shot on net, and nice save by Crono. Lost her stick, she's gonna reach around for it. Finally gets it back, shot comes across and it'll just a bit wide. That shot was fired in from the attack of Burn Burton. I believe it came off the stick of number 12, Kaylin Downey, the senior, as that one also coming across, deflected away from Crono. Puck across the boards on the left side. Now skipped in all the way around, here comes the Raiders defense line to pick it up. Pickel, the junior, knocked away. Nice uh, opportunity there for Edwards, but Edwards has it knocked away. Is no, an open ice hit. They're going to say clean, though. Nice takeaway there for Burn Burton. Here's an opportunity on the other side off the post, trying to go back with it. Still finding the puck is still loose, and now on the far side, it'll be finally cleared away. That's Peyton Allen on the right side, taking that away for the Raiders. And that'll come all the way back and behind the net. Can't give it away here, but Raiders looking for an option here. Nice move to avoid the contact there by Crookshank. Puck still on her stick. She's going to try a slap shot, deflected off the defender on the far side, right off the skate there of number 21. That's Katie Brownlee, the freshman defenseman. Raiders get it back right there off the stick at the middle ice. They're going to switch him up here. Couple of substitutions. We'll get you those when we can. Now right in front of us here. It's a battle of number 21 for the Raiders and uh, the Burn Burton Bulldogs. Raiders lead it one to nothing. They have the puck behind the Burn Burton net. Skipped, uh, taken away. Line change could catch the Raiders off guard. It's a three on two. Poked away, great defense in there. That is just fantastic stuff from Crookshank. She's been all over it. And Caitlin, that is really impressive stuff. As we get a backhand, no, and a save on the other end. A nice job there by the goalkeeper. It's Kaya, or excuse me, Kyra Pacher who made the stop. But Caitlin, talk about how uh, how important is it to have your, a defender like that that's able to skate both up and down the ice and really make some big plays for your defense? Yeah, it definitely shows how well-rounded they are as a player and that they can play all positions. And like going back to where Gabby stepped up, like Grace was like hanging back for her just in case, and like having the support there is very big too on a defensive line. 
And this is why we brought Caitlin up here, folks, to tell you the things that I would not have a clue about what to say. I played basketball, and hockey is not my game, but it sure was Caitlin Fielders. So we are very lucky to have her up in the booth with us tonight. There's another shot on the keeper, but another save. And a nice job there. We'll switch him up again. It looks like a couple of new folks entering the game. It looks like Caitlin Casavant, the senior, as well as Linnea Darrow. Wow, as a junior in high school, went to elementary school with the Darrows. And man, being in college and coming back and seeing some of these kids <laughs> grow up makes me feel really old, man. Makes me feel way too old. Shot is up and over the crossbar there. And whistled and the puck scooped up there by Croto and a nice job defending the crease there for the Raiders. So face off here, right side, one by the Raiders, a nice job there by Chloe Pembroke. And now the Raiders looking to push the pace a little bit. Lagerstedt wanted to go coast to coast again perhaps, but she was disrupted. Pembroke stops, dumps it off in the far side. Puck skipped all the way around the boards and here to clean it up is Crookshank. But this time taken away by Pennern Peterson, excuse me, my apologies. Peterson for Burn Burton. Back around to Kaya Peterson, but Crookshank takes it away and she'll send it all the way down. And now we'll get our first icing of the contest. Uh, took us to the 243 minute mark in the first period for us to get there. But Caitlin, it looks, uh, you know, this is a Raiders team who struggled a little bit in their first contest, but getting that first early goal probably gave them some big momentum. This looks a little bit like a different team in my eyes. What are you seeing that's different from their first game to today? Um, I think they're all, like, using each other the past couple of games. I feel like they weren't as confident in themselves, which I had told them that. I said you need to be confident in like you don't rely on others because once you're confident in yourself, you, it'll all come together. You guys will connect and you'll be a better team. Some well-spoken advice from Caitlin Fielder as the Raiders have a one to nothing lead. And right now you gotta imagine the confidence feeling pretty high with the one goal lead against a talented Burn Burton program. And that is gonna have to be fought for here as it's knocked away by the defense of the Raiders. Nice job there on the attack for Burn Burton. It was Harper Wilson, the sophomore, who had it knocked away by Crookshank again. Nice job there for the Raiders. Piquel. And we're going to get another whistle here, and they're going to change him up here. So interestingly enough, the face-off won by the Raiders. We'll get back to that point in just a moment. We have some downtime. As right off the skate on the near side, right in front of the Raiders' net, scooped up by Crookshank, trying to get away with it. But now Burn Burton back on the puck. Nice job to get a stick inside there by Crookshank, who's had her hands busy and her stick active. And speaking of busy hands, Croto, the goalkeeper, again with another stop. And Caitlin, she is just looking very good in between the posts. Yeah, she's definitely making those saves that need to be saved and not just giving up rebounds. She's covering it as well. Nobody can play the role of the garbage man today for Burn Burton, at least so far in the first period. And with 117, the Raiders will try and take a one nothing lead uh, to the locker room, but they're still gonna have 
A minute to try and uh, make that happen. Burn Burton with the puck on the far side. Coming towards the Raider goal. Here's a slap shot, and there's a save. A rebound opportunity, but kind of dumped it right off to her player there. And Hannah Drury, the forward and defenseman. Drury, one of those versatile players that can do it on both sides of the puck. Puck right in front of the Burn Burton net. Kind of loose. Nobody wants to pick it up, and now... Burnburn finally able to get it out of the zone just enough. It's scooped up ahead to Maya Duncan. Duncan for the Burn Burton squad is now the Raiders have it, but quickly turned back over. Back and forth we go here. That one knocked away. A diving stick poke away there as Raiders try to maybe even add another one. Puck all the way back by the blue line on the Raiders' side of this and. With seven seconds, we'll see if anybody can do anything to to shoot it. The shot, at the buzzer is saved by Croto. No rebound opportunity. She scoops it up and ends it just like that. So one to nothing. After period number one, the Raiders leading the Bulldogs. When we come back, more hockey for you on cbtsport.net. Don't go anywhere. Do you have scrap metal taking up space in your home, business, or job site? Whether you're a contractor, electrician, manufacturer, service garage, or homeowner, Bulldog Metal Recycling is your local recycling expert helping clean up junk piles, keeping Vermont green, and putting green in your wallet. Bring your big or small scrap metal load to them on Bulldog Road in Middlesex where their three scales and professional staff will help you recycle it. Their roll-off containers come in a variety of sizes for one-time or ongoing scrap metal collection. They buy and recycle copper, brass, steel, wire, pipe, lead-acid batteries, cars, appliances, and more. They're contractor-friendly with years of experience and provide project walkthroughs. Let their team handle your site cleanup or demo. Bulldux also has storage containers in 20 or 40 foot lengths for rent or purchase. Perfect for keeping your valuable items out of the elements, safe and close at hand. For more information, visit BulldukMetalRecycling.com. Their name is their website, and as always, Bulldux Metal Recycling says, thanks a ton.
Streaming of this game is made possible by Heist Painting. Heist Painting specializes in interior and exterior painting for residences, businesses, and schools in the Central Vermont area. Call today for a free estimate or visit HeistPainting.com. 802-229-2389. That's Heist Painting. This game was made possible by Tournament Specialties, Central Vermont's corporate and team apparel specialists. If you are looking for an updated look for your business or want the latest look for your sports team, Tournament Specialties is the place to contact. Along with their embroidery and ink decorating services, they also work with groups who want a storefront to sell their items. A great way to fundraise without upfront cost and risk. Email Jeff at Tournament Specialties to learn more tournamentdesigns at gmail.com. Vermont middle and high school students can start college for free at the Community College of Vermont. Get a taste of college life and learn about options after high school by attending an access day and enrolling in our Intro to College and Careers class. Juniors and seniors are eligible for two dual enrollment vouchers, each good for one free CCV course. And seniors can complete their last year of high school and first year of college at the same time through the early college program. They can even stay at CCV and earn a free associate degree through the McClure Free Degree Promise. Learn more at gotocollegevt.org. Mark and I worked at Barrytown Elementary School when we were in college. We're both very family-oriented and community-driven. Barry has a special place in our heart, obviously being our hometown. When I met Mark and Ruben, they were college grads. Seven years later, they manage over 750 units in Vermont. In their spare time, they give back to the people they grew up with. There are people in our community who are battling childhood cancer. This organization doesn't just financially fund their hospital bills. We actually help them out with the day-to-day -day expenses. Local business owners, local community members, just a lot of local people that are congregating to uh, help raise, raise a lot of money for these families. In small towns everywhere across America, this story gets repeated over and over. Local businesses coming together to support their friends, neighbors, and customers. Our priorities and the bank's priorities align we're all trying to make the community a better place. This game is also made possible by Vermont Fellowship of Christian Athletes, established in 1954, a community working to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. You can find more information at fcavermont.org, and you can contact them by email at glennolson at fca.org. Made possible by locally owned Packard Fuels. Located in East Montpelier, Vermont, Packard Fuels is a proud supporter of local athletics and community events. Packard Fuels provides home heating oil and service throughout central Vermont. Owned by Ellery Packard III, Packard Fuels, 802-262-3835. Packard Fuels, keeping you warm. Prom season is just around the corner, and Tuckstown has the expertise and wide selection of styles and colors to help you look your best. Tuckstown has been outfitting air coolers from Pillar U32 and Randolph for over a decade. Getting your prom or wedding tux doesn't have to be stressful. Let Tanya Lewis help make your special occasion planning fun. Call or text to schedule your appointment today. 802-498-5531. Tuxtown, your local formal wear specialist.
Welcome back to the Civic Center. No, McLean, Caitlin Fielder rocking with you here as we are just about ready for the second period of action. And before we get started, Caitlin, what did you see in the first half? First for the Raiders that you liked, and then on the flip side, what does Burn Burton have to do in your eyes to see if they can get back in this contest? Um, I think... I'm just going to say they both had very good, like, potentials at scoring. Like, they had a lot of opportunities, and I think they used them. I just think the other team, like, stopped it, I guess. I don't know. But as far as Burn Burn coming back, I think they need to capitalize on the fact that, like, when they're open, they need to shoot. Because sometimes the Raiders get caught up not marking people up. And they need to take that to their advantage. Can certainly understand what you're saying by that is another quick save, a glove save by, yep, you guessed it, Chrono down there for the Raiders. And, uh, you know, it's interesting you say that. It did seem as though with this net right in front of us, we have a pretty good angle of in that first period. Burn Burton seemed to be kind of waiting and waiting and waiting until it was almost a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And I understand that that seems like a good opportunity, but sometimes, just like you said, Caitlin, you have to be able to take that little wrist shot, that slap shot from outside, test the keeper, see if you can get one to sneak in between somewhere. Or, you know, and even if the first one doesn't go in, you take a shot a little bit farther out, that's more of an opportunity of a rebound to come right back out and have one of your teammates finish it off. But we'll see what Burn Burton can do in the second half. The Raiders, again, the lone goal as that one, a stop by Croto, loose on the far side and behind the net. The Raiders trying to clear it out. But instead, it'll be taken right back by Burn Burton's Edwards. Onto the far side, Edwards over there battling with, it looks like, Miller. Is big hit into the boards. And uh, I believe that is Maya Duncan, who is down on the ice still, just kinda needed to wait a moment for herself to get up. And now the Puck is going to be skipped along the boards behind the U32 net. Loose inside. Hornby swings it across mid-ice. And another battle for the puck comes up in the Raiders' possession. Here comes an opportunity quickly knocked away. Hornby all the way back, but the Raiders are going to try and swing it behind the Burn Burton net up to get this one is Kopech. Kopech, left side, moving quickly across mid-ice. She's gonna go all the way around, go behind the Raiders net, dumps it off, here's a shot on goal, and saved. That's one of those opportunities I was talking about where they're left, right, and front. Gotta take advantage of those, but that was a beautiful save. And she had all the time in the world, could have sat down in a lawn chair and watched the sunrise with the amount of time she had in front of the net. But credit to the goalkeeper in Croto for the Raiders, but also exactly like you said, Caitlin, I do like the idea there. That's a shot that you definitely have to take every single time. And we'll see here. If the Raiders can clear it out of the defensive side, it's been in the Raiders' zone for most of the beginning of this second period. Burn Burn is really holding that blue line with their points, just shoving it back down into the zone. And Something to note is we have seen Carmela Livingston exit the locker room out of her uniform. She's on her own feet. She's uh -oh. talking to the trainer and a little bit of a scuffle going on down there. A couple of players getting a little rough and tough right in front of the Raiders net. The referee's saying, all right, that's enough of that. 
And we'll wait to see if there'll be any respected penalties. I didn't see any calls for it. I think they're just gonna say, all right, that's enough, and head to the face-off circle as far as I'm aware. Yep, looks like nothing, uh, nothing too serious. Officials probably just gonna let the coaches know, hey guys, watch your players. Make sure that we're keeping things clean and safe out here. And the officials talking to, can't see for sure, but likely head coach Edward Lewicki III down there. Head coach for Burn Burton. Face off one by Burn Burton. Raiders though gonna get it right back. Nice little move right off the boards. Trying to play it to herself up ahead. Emily Tringe that was. Now quickly taken back by Hannah Drury, right in front of the net, oh, but coming in from the middle of nowhere was Katie Brownlee. Nice job by Brownlee to step in front of that puck as a shot is off the left side. Burn Burton tried to respond quickly, but couldn't. Still in the U32 zone. And look out, hitting the ice hard, and that is gonna be tripping, I believe. Got caught up in her skate. And Caitlin, correct me if I'm wrong, but that should be the call, right? Just a minor and a tripping yep. penalty? Yep. Awesome. I mean, I mean, I think that could have been a little, like, questionable, but overall, I think that should have been a penalty. Her stick was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Some players having fun out there with the uh, music in between the, uh, the action. Yeah, that one right in front of the Raiders net. And another nice job. And that one, dancing to the music before was Chloe Pembroke. And one thing to note, Chloe Pembroke, a freshman, a couple of freshmen on this U32 team. And unlike other sports, Caitlin, you know, obviously in most sports you start playing when you're at any age. We'll get back to this thought momentarily here as Raiders have a potential breakaway disrupted by Burren Burton. Burn Burton quickly back into the Raiders zone, but U32 able to play some good defense for the time being coming across the middle ice. Now behind the own, their own net. Oh, well, look out, hitting the deck there, and lucky that she was able to get a stick on that. That was Tatro, or excuse me, my apologies. The Raiders now in front of the Burn Burton net, just barely unable to finish that. Now Burn Burton quickly the other way. And now we're gonna get a whistle. For offsides. Offsides. And so they'll switch him up. But back to the point I was gonna say before, and maybe you can speak to this, but hockey is a, a special thing in itself because it doesn't really matter how old you are if you're like you you have it feels to me like you're more likely to have like a, f a freshman on varsity hockey making an impact than a freshman on varsity basketball so to say because it's not really about like your age it's just about how well you can skate and how well you can you know what what teams you've played for and obviously hockey you're playing if you're playing seriously you're playing club from a very yes. very young age yeah um, I mean, personally for me, like I started in fourth grade like that. Yeah, I feel like that nowadays is an older age to start. Like some people start like in kindergarten, like when they're little kids. Yeah, but, like typically I would say. Oh, no, this is going to be a goal. I think Did it sneak in. It did just as we were having a bit of a conversation. It looks as though maybe the refs are. Refs are talking about it. I haven't seen an official signal yet. So let's see it here. Is it cool. is. Yep. So now there's the official signal, and this game is tied one to one. They definitely use that penalty to their advantage, which yep. you should always score if you're up one. That's what I was always taught growing up. Took advantage on the 
Woman up opportunity. Power play goal for the Burn Burton squad here and another whistle will send things back towards center ice. So this game knotted at one apiece with nine minutes and 11 seconds left to go in the second period. Raiders defending in their own zone here. Puck skipped all the way around with a bit of space receiving that one for the Raiders. Hard to see a number, we'll get it to you momentarily as that one stopped by the keeper for Burn Burton, still right behind the Burn Burton net, Pembroke. Fighting for the puck, she has it knocked away. Now onto the stick right here of Wilson. Wilson has it taken away, now right back to the Raiders. Cross ice, knocked away. Nice job there by Drury to retrieve it for the Raiders, still loose. Pembroke tried to get in there and now she'll leave it for Drury to pick it up. Oh, that was a great look. Oh, and they didn't realize there was another Skater right behind her. It was a great cross pass, or cross ice pass, I should say. My apologies, but just jumped in front of it a little too soon, and then a couple players getting tangled up. A little kick pass down the far side, and Burn Burton will kick it behind the radar net. Raiders looking to get that lead back. This game all tied up, could do it here. A little roller and a kick save away. Busy few minutes for Pacher. Raiders back into the Burn Burton zone. Still loose on the far side. Now coming away with it for Burn Burton is Brownlee, the freshman. We've called her name a few times and Yet again, another save via the glove for Croto. And it seems like in the last few minutes, except for that goal in this second period, it's been a relatively quiet half. Kind of both teams, no one really playing with that much control over the puck possession. Kind of going back and forth and Burn Burton was just lucky enough to have one kind of dribble in in order to tie this game up, but doesn't matter how you get it. <laughs> a goal is a goal, no matter which way you think about it, talk about it or <laughs> get it to go into the back of the net, doesn't really matter. As puck going all the way behind the Burn Burton net. Trying to clear it up towards the center ice. Crookshank. Skating ahead and... That line change yep. really got him. Whistle blows that dead and we've already seen a couple of times what Piquel can do. She was skating with speed and something tells me there wasn't gonna be much from stopping her to get to there and the potentially the back of the net. A lot of contact on that face off, but no whistle. Things will continue to play here. Here's another opportunity potentially after that one. Trinch looking around, has it knocked away. That was actually Lagerstedt, my apologies for the Raiders here. Lagerstedt trying to get inside, knocked away, nice job there. Onto the stick now for Burn Burton. It's Brownlee. Brownlee still with it, the freshman. Nice stick work, cuts inside, shot is up. And it's just off the side padding of the keeper. Rolls to the back of the, behind the net for the Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders have the puck there on the counter attack. Here's a wind up, and there's a shot. Nice save right there by Pacher. Loose right in front of the net. This is a good opportunity, but a nice job there again by Brownlee, who's really having her presence felt. 
on this defensive side of things. We talk about freshmen making an impact. Katie Brownlee, the freshman defenseman for Burn Burton, has been fantastic tonight in the last few minutes. Raiders with the puck now, though. And that time, getting a stick save was Kopech for Burn Burton. Raiders still controlling it. But now, over to the dangerous Downey. And Whistle will stop the action. Another glove save there with 4.55 left to go in the second period. Couple of new bodies out there for both sides. Raiders couldn't see everybody that came on. We do know that Stefani just came on. Oh, they have too many men. Yep. And I think they might have gotten away with it too. Yep. Yeah, they got lucky. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> did not realize that they were not supposed to be out on the ice. <laughs> and. Oh. They might be resetting the clock right now, but maybe not. I don't know what that was about. We saw an official go over for a moment as a. Little wrist shot is deflected off the stick of a Raider defenseman. Around the boards to the far side. Lagerstedt, the junior, trying to get inside. There's a shot, hard contact. Going to keep things rolling. Right in front of the stands over there is Puck right in front of the Burn Burton bench. Whistle as Maya Duncan had the puck, but Whistle is going to stop the action right in front of the benches there. And we'll get a face off here just beyond mid ice. Here's Tringe, has it taken away. Kopech gives it right back to Tringe. Tringe tried to go across. Duncan knocked it away. That was a great breakout pass. Now some options. Edwards trying to make something happen for Burn Burton, but quickly has the puck taken away. Now back across the ice, that pass was intended for Duncan. And the puck is going to slip out and squirt all the way down past the red line. Some good puck movement here in the last few minutes from Burn Burton. As a shot, and that one is just wide. Had it been on target, that could have had a chance of finding the back of the net. But instead, the Raiders can take a sigh of relief for at least a moment. It's coming all the way down and out. And that is gonna be an icing call. And a pass intended for Tringe, but the Raiders do get it out of their territory to take a moment to regroup. And sometimes, even though you get an icing call, that's exactly what you need just to re regroup yourselves, just give yourself a moment to say, all right, let's set up here and at least be on the same page as one before the offense has a chance to do some real damage here. Far side, Raiders take the puck away. Up ahead now, one-on-one -on -one opportunity. A little too far. Off of that pass, right in front of the net, loose, now behind on the far side. Battling for it is Miller. Puck skipped away. Onto the stick now of Kopech. Kopech cuts it back left side. Good stick work, stops, sends it right in front of the net, still loose, shot is up and that's off the side. Still loose inside, who's gonna get there? Whistle blows and it looks like 
Croto fell on top of it. And there was bodies hitting the deck everywhere. A couple of fans expressing their displeasure from both sides. No whistles. I think it was good, clean hockey. Well, that's what it looked like from up here. You know, when there's that many bodies trying to get that small little puck from one area. I mean, everything can look a little tangled, but lucky for the Raiders, they kept it out in the scrum. Face off one by Burn Burton. Duncan, she's got a little maroon and a nice glove save by Crono reaches across the way and didn't even want to let that one go beyond the net. We talked about the opportunities and maybe one of Caitlin Fielder's favorite things to do was clean it up and well Maya Duncan uh, tried to maybe give that an opportunity for one of her teammates but instead Crono said no nope, I don't think I'll have any of that today. Raiders with a minute 36 on the clock. Trying to work inside. Puck behind the burn burn net. Kind of loose now. Far side knocked away by Edwards. Edwards trying to go forward. Now loose. Here's a little opportunity. Shot on net. Slides. Oh. It's loose. Picked up by the burn burn defense on the far side. It's Brownlee. Kopech with it now. Skating across mid ice. Here's Edwards. Edwards. Shoots and that's over the top of the crossbar. Tried to get an opportunity there to Edwards and now here come the Raiders on the break. A one on three. Slots at home, nobody there. Still loose inside. It was Trinch who was her and nobody else for the Raiders. Tried to sneak one back across inside to Drury but instead it's knocked away. Raiders though gonna try a big flick. That's up and over the net. Far side. Still in the Raiders' possession. Pembroke swings it off to the far side. Now over there to get it for the Raiders is Crookshank. Look out, take it away. Good speed on that one for Hornby. Hornby had it for a moment before all of a sudden Pacal came back to take it for the Raiders. 21 seconds remaining, second period. Raiders off the line change. Here comes Drury. Here she goes, splits one defender. The shot is coming most likely. Shoots and a save. A big save there. It was some great stick work, good composure from Drury, but an even better save by the senior goalie for Burn Burton with 9.4 seconds left. Raiders will have one last opportunity at it here. Cl clock winding down, gonna have to take a shot, deflected, and no shots will come after that as the second period comes to a close and a good one to say the least, especially down the stretch. It was a bit slow to start. We saw the leak in goal to tie the game at one and that is where we stand. And we will take a short break, but when we come back, all nodded at one apiece. Burn Burton and U32 in a good one here at the Civic Center on CVTSport.net. This game was made possible by Tournament Specialties, Central Vermont's corporate and team apparel specialist. If you are looking for an updated look for your business or want the latest look for your sports team, Tournament Specialties is the place to contact. Along with their embroidery and ink decorating services, they also work with groups who want a storefront to sell their items. A great way to fundraise without upfront cost and risk. Email Jeff at Tournament Specialties to learn more. Tournament Designs at gmail.com. Local formal wear specialist. Vermont middle and high school students can start college for free at the Community College of Vermont. Get a taste of college life and learn about options after high school by attending an access day and enrolling in our Intro to College and Careers class. Juniors and seniors are eligible for two dual enrollment vouchers, each good for one free CCV course. And seniors can complete their last year of high school and first year of college at the same time through the early college program. They can even stay at CCV and earn a free associate degree through the McClure Free Degree Promise. Learn more at gotocollegevt.org. 
Mark and I worked at Barrytown Elementary School when we were in college. We're both very family-oriented and community-driven. Barry has a special place in our heart, obviously being our hometown. When I met Mark and Ruben, they were college grads. Seven years later, they manage over 750 units in Vermont. In their spare time, they give back to the people they grew up with. There are people in our community who are battling childhood cancer. This organization doesn't just financially fund their hospital bills. We actually help them out with the day-to-day -day expenses. Local business owners, local community members, just a lot of local people that are congregating to uh, help raise, raise a lot of money for these families. In small towns everywhere across America, this story gets repeated over and over. Local businesses coming together to support their friends, neighbors, and customers. Our priorities and the bank's priorities align. We're all trying to make the community a better place. This game is also made possible by Vermont Fellowship of Christian Athletes, established in 1954, a community working to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. You can find more information at fcavermont.org, and you can contact them by email at glennolson at fca.org. Made possible by locally owned Packard Fuels. Located in East Montpelier, Vermont, Packard Fuels is a proud supporter of local athletics and community events. Packard Fuels provides home heating oil and service throughout central Vermont. Owned by Ellery Packard III, Packard Fuels, 802-262-3835. Packard Fuels, keeping you warm. This game is made possible by CVTV723.org. If you want to support live streamed Spalding High School sports, please go to CVTV723.org and look for the Donate Now tab.
Welcome back here to the Central Vermont Civic Center, home of the U32 Raiders. And boy, do we have a great game on our hands, one to one, as we are just about ready to go into the third period of action. Noah McLean and former U32 Raiders star Caitlin Fielder joining us and ever so kind to unexpectedly take some time out of her day. I went down and I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I said, hey, listen, I've grabbed your sister before for basketball games, Sam Fielder, if you're listening for some reason, how do you do? All the way from Texas out there, not sure if uh, everything's bigger in Texas, but uh, I'll tell you what, here we got a big one, uh, the hockey game, and I went down and I said, Hey, Caitlin, I got a job for you. And she said, well, what's that? I said, well, I need you to come broadcast with me. And she's like, well, I don't know how to do it. And I said, well, here's the issue. I don't know hockey. You know hockey, so I need your help. So we're very fortunate to have Caitlin Fielder with us. And uh, Caitlin, one-to-one, -one, the story so far. And for both teams, kind of, again, similar to the first question that I asked, but, you know, what have you seen uh, that you have liked and then something that you think needs to change for both of these squads? I think they've both had very good breakouts out of their zone. I kind of already said this, but... Oh, Ooh, right off the crossbar, a near finish. I think both teams need to capitalize on the opportunities they have, like I said before, because even in the second period, there was many opportunities that weren't necessarily taken. So we'll see which team is going to be able to get the opportunity here as a little bit of a toss of the stick there. And that was the stick of right there, uh, Hannah Drury, but it was picked up and tossed by Kalen Downey, I believe. And, uh, well... Not exactly sure what the reasoning for the toss of the stick was, but for some reason, Downey didn't like it. Puck behind the net now. Still in possession of uh, uh, Burn Burton now across mid-ice, all the way up front. Raiders defense will swing around and pick it up right here. Quick now on the boards. Shot on the net, that's gonna skip around the right side. All the way around for the Raiders to pick it up here. Burn Burton though, still fighting for it. They get it back now into the near side. Little shot flicked away by the keeper. And we'll see here as a couple of players down right in front of us trying to kick that puck out from under. A Couple of folks Right on the boards here for the Raiders. Now right in front, look out, and an opportunity for Burn Burton perhaps. Shot is blocked away, a nice skate save for the Raiders, and uh, they will clear it all the way out and up ahead. Won't go all the way back. Burn Burton just gonna do the same thing as we get a line change here. Drury with the puck, she'll skip it around to the far side. Now taken away off the boards on the line change. Burn Burton gets the puck right back. Nice job though, Drury coming all the way back to get the puck back for the Raiders. And uh, this is really just continuing to go back and forth. Puck skipped around to the boards. Far side, right in front of us, it's Crookshank with the puck. Looking for an option to clear it. Now she goes right side. Still one to one in the third period, 11.45 remaining. Crookshank has it knocked away. And the official once again is gonna have to skid away and Caitlin, a couple of close calls here. Uh, we saw that shot go right off the crossbar. That one had some distance on it. Maybe to your point, I like the, uh, the fact that they took that shot a little farther out than we've seen earlier in this game. Yeah. So the Raiders and uh, the Bulldogs here trying to see who can capitalize this was a rivalry last year. We won't talk about it too much. I know that's a little sore for Caitlin, but man, I, I'm uh, imagining that after last year, our uh, <laughs> color commentator tonight, Caitlin, would love to see a Raiders victory as 
We're going to get a whistle there and a penalty, perhaps. See what the call is. A couple of changes coming in from both sides. So the nice job for the Raiders here to take the face off. It'll be Miller. Miller wins it. Crookshank on the far side now. Raiders coming back across the neutral zone. Into the behind the Raiders net here. Puck still right, right on the boards. And trying to come away with it. Still fighting for the puck on the far side. Some back and forth hockey we go here between U32 and Burn Burton. Puck right in front of the net. Look out. Oh, nice save. The kick save from the keeper just beyond the far side. And it was trying to go up and in perhaps and give Burn Burton the lead. But instead, the Raiders dodged the bullet there. Puck skipped across the far side. Burn Burton had it momentarily, but U32 actually able to keep it in. And Crono will cover it up right inside the crease. And she says, no more second chance opportunities. And finally, the skaters of U32 will get a much needed break there. Caitlin, that was a long time before there was a line change for the Raiders there. Burn Burton got one off a few moments ago, but that's gotta be tiring. Yeah, it's tough to get a line change, especially when you're in your defensive zone, because if you leave, then you're obviously down a player. So it's best to get a line change when you're in an offensive zone. Obviously that's not always gonna happen, but it'll leave you out there and burn you a little bit. <laughs> Certainly will. Whistle stopping play there, and uh, the officials gonna talk some things over. And it looks like maybe we will get a penalty for slashing. Is that, was that the call there? I couldn't I quite see, see the official did. thing, but it'll be a two minute penalty. And the Raiders will be down a skater here. And that is not good for the Raiders, especially as the faceoff will come in their own zone. We're gonna get a quick timeout here though. And so with that, we'll take a short step aside. Again, this is a fantastic game, one-to-one. -one. And before we do, we'd love to give a little shout-out to some of those listening at home. Jamin Romano, Kyle DeSantis, a couple of folks listening around. We thank you so much for tuning in to CBT Sports. And again, if you can make sure that you can tune in all the time, some great productions and, uh, well, Carl Parton listening at home. We want to give you a big shout out. I know you're not able to be here physically, but always doing work behind the scenes. A big thank you to Mr. Carl Parton. And with that, I'll stop talking so you guys don't have to listen to my annoying voice anymore. We'll be back right after this timeout. 10.06, nodded at one here between U32 and Burn Burton. Welcome back here, everybody. The third period uh, after the timeout, the Raiders down a skater here, and they're gonna have to see what they can do. They are down a skater, as we mentioned, for the next one minute and 47 seconds. Some physical activity out there. As of right now, nothing called. There is a signal, and now we're gonna get That'd be an a whistle. Yep. See, this is why we have you up here, Caitlin. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, high school, they play delayed offsides, so. If someone dumps it and you're offsides, they won't call it unless you touch the puck, and eventually someone touched it, so. Raiders win the faceoff. That one skipped all the way up and behind the net. 126 left on the power play here for Burn Burn. Dumped off in front. Shot knocked away there. Nice job 
by the Raiders defense. It was Lagerstead who got her stick on it. Fighting for it right in front of the U32 goal. And just gonna clear that one all the way down and off of the pads of the goalie down there. So the Raiders needed to just get rid of it. Tringe said, give myself and my teammates an opportunity to, re to regain themselves. The key to a good penalty kill is to not chase the puck. Oftentimes, teams will play a box. So you can guess a box is like two up top, two on bottom. And here comes a breakaway opportunity for the Raiders potentially as, oh, look out, a big hit on the far side. And Chloe Pembroke was off to the races when she got taken out and a clear foul there. Will now even things out and in fact the Raiders if they can kill the 25 seconds of the power play then Caitlin then they'll be off a skater but right now things back evened out mm -hmm. four skaters apiece for both sides the Raiders will get their fifth skater back after 25 seconds of play. Loose on the far side, puck back in. And the Raiders will see if they can capitalize. That one up and over, off the boards, behind the net. Eight seconds before the Raiders get their fifth skater back. And they've been down a player, but they have not been up a player yet this game. They've been able to actually kill a power. Nope, actually they had a goal, uh, uh, excuse me, conceded that goal while they were down a player in the first period. And now, here in the third, we'll see if they can take advantage of the power play of their own. Raiders right in front of the net, shot on the far side and is saved by the Burn Burton goalkeeper, Kyra Patcher, has had some nice saves right in front of her net. And uh, so we'll have another face off here Raiders with the puck and some unhappy fans as we saw somebody on the far side hit the ice hard. Puck coming all the way back across the red line here. Scooting all the way now right in front of us here. Behind the net is Crookshank. Crookshank up ahead to Pembroke. Pembroke across the ice now. Far side with it and Trying to get somewhere was Drury. Instead, it'll be knocked away back to Lagerstedt. Now she's going. Splits two defenders, tries to go inside, has it knocked away, cut back inside. Uh, and uh, on that play, it was Trinch who knocked it behind the goal for the Raiders. Now, here come the Raiders again on the offensive attack across the blue line. Look out! That is going to be. A tripping foul, a penalty there. And the Raiders, once again, are going to be on the advantage. Slow to get up there. But seemingly A-OK. -okay. It's a couple of times Raider athletes have been on a breakaway almost and then just kind of getting tripped up and at some point you gotta make sure that things start to you know you can make a good hockey play and prevent them from scoring a goal but you also got to be careful here with these egregious takeouts you know to prevent a goal I know there's in other sports at least there's rules where if you have a breakaway and you just you're not trying to make let's say for example a basketball play and you just uh, egregiously foul somebody you know, then it's the other team is actually penalized for it. And in my mind, I don't know, Caitlin, maybe you can speak to this if there's a rule on that, if you're on a breakaway and it's so egregious that it's clearly not trying to make a play for the puck, it's just trying to prevent a goal that's dangerous, then that maybe there's a, a, a penalty for that? Yeah, so there can be, like, if it's a clear breakaway and, like, a player 
foul, well, gets a penalty or just like, does anything to like seriously like object that, there can be a penalty shot. So basically like they take it from the s center of the ice and it's like one on zero with the goalie. And, and on that one, you don't think that was enough for that, right? Uh, no, because there was, there is everyone in their defensive zone. Like, say, like, Hannah had the puck and she came, like, she was at the middle of the ice and it was, like, uh, clear, like, no one was going to get in her way. And kind of has to like, be, like, you and the goalie and then yeah. somebody comes across. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yep, that makes sense. And some... Fans really getting rowdy down there on the far side. Shaking the class. 6.38 left to go in the third period. One to one the score. Raiders. They really got to take advantage of this three on five right here. As Burn Burn ices it. <laughs> and then they will ice the puck there. Or actually, no. Don't get the official call there yet, but Raiders up a skater here nonetheless. Trench cuts it Ooh. back, has a shot back in, just off the side of the net. Oh my goodness, Trench with some fancy stick work. That was a good move. And I thought for sure she was gonna be able to slot that back. It was a everything but the final piece of the puzzle right there. And I think the Burn Burton bench just took a sigh of relief Held their breath for a moment, I'm sure. As this one is going to come all the way back over for the Raiders. That one skipped up ahead. Onto the stick of Pembroke. Chloe Pembroke out there. Now the Raiders onto the far side behind their own net. Got to get it out. See if they can get something going here. That pass intended for Trench, just a little bit too strong. As it's back up to Trench, looking across ice. Nice job there. As Pembroke getting into the action behind the net. Skated around far side. Still loose, and it was an opportunity maybe there for Drury if she had been just a little bit closer to Find a loose puck, but that one off the side and over now behind the U32 net. Still battling for it, loose inside. Shot misses. Down off the boards, the Raiders keeping it in the zone and the power play now comes to an end as the extra skater nearly came on and almost had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, it was Edwards who came flying out of the gate there. And uh, that play clearly practiced and nearly drawn up to perfection right there. Had that pass just been about an inch or two less, Caitlin, that was gonna be pretty dangerous. That would have been, yeah. Our defense would have had to really back check. So 428 remaining. And because that one went all the way across without anybody touching it, the icing was called. Raiders losing the faceoff there. But they get the puck back pretty quickly after. And now stolen right back for Burn Burn. Here's an opportunity potentially slide it back inside, knocked away, and a glove save. Covering it up right there is Crodo. Nice job. That girl was wide open. She did a good job tracking that puck. Maya Duncan, it's Duncan and Edwards, two players here on the attack for Burn Burton, who we've mentioned many, many times in this broadcast, were the two that nearly had that beautiful connection to one another. Duncan has it now. And she looked for Edwards again, but this time knocked away by the defense, and that's going to be cleared all the way down and called for icing. And I like that play, actually, because, you know, this is, that felt like one of those moments, Caitlin, like when we talked about earlier, where you just need to give your defense a chance to reset, clear it out, get some new legs on the ice, and see if you can dial in and make sure nothing else happens, especially 
in this close of a game with so little time left. Shot on net, knocked away by the keeper. Nice save by Crodell. Going down, a couple of bodies hitting the ice here. And hitting the ice kind of hard there, I believe was Peyton Allen, perhaps. Nope, my Grace. apologies. Didn't have a good angle on the number. And it's Lagerstad who fell on top of the puck and she'll take a seat on the bench momentarily. Face off right in front of the U32 net, one by Byrne Burton. Working the puck around, nice job there. Just using her body nice, but not too much. And that one is gonna be glove save. Good heads up awareness right there by Crota to see that it was creeping towards her crease. So we'll get another face off right in front of the net here. 3.29 remaining. Face off won by Burn Burton. Sent right oh. back in, it's knocked away. And another save by Crono. A very close call there. It was on the receiving end of that shot was Peterson. And now the Raiders trying to capitalize on the other end. 3.13 to go, all knotted up. Slap shot from far out, just misses off the right side. Another shot opportunity, loose in front and trying to slot it back there, knocked away again. Patcher is at a very busy time, another slap shot coming, this one off the mark well. This one wide right, off to the far side, here's Byrne Burton, they have control, but look out, another shot and somehow ended right back up with the Raiders, who've had a couple of shots that have come close here in the last few moments. Pembroke tried to skate over to that one but couldn't get to it. And right now it's Downey, the defenseman for the Burn Burton squad who gave it away to the Raiders and then Raiders give it right back. Playing a game of hot potato with the hockey puck right now. 2.20 left to go. Pembroke off the ice. Miller on the ice. Raiders getting it out of the zone. Trying to go off the zone, that pass looked like it was intended for Kazavant, the forward for the Raiders. Instead deflected away. Puck off the stick there. That one gonna go right behind the Raiders net. And nice move, actually got the defender to fall down there. Little ankle breaker perhaps is look out. That's gonna be a play on, I guess. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay. So now we got a whistle. But am I am I mistaken? That wasn't for the original. No, that, that was an for, icing. Right, okay, so that, that's for the, the icing. The penalty that should have been called yes. was not called. Okay, okay, so no penalty call. I just wanted to clarify in the terms that that was for the icing, not for the potential penalty. But regardless, U32 had the faceoff and had a shot on net there momentarily, but a little wide as this one loose right in front, 119 to go. Raiders hard hit, open ice, just two bodies going hard at it. Here comes Burton Burton. This could be a dangerous shot. Puck saved, loose for a moment, but Crodo able to gather it right back up. And man, oh man, Crodo has just been so good in between the goalposts today. So for U32, it'll be Hannah Drury who takes the face off. And for Burren Burton, it looks like it will be Edwards. Nope, now they're gonna switch it. They're actually gonna send Downey to take the face off and one by Drury, but all of a sudden Burren Burton able to get it back. Downey on the far side, Edwards with the puck. Behind the U32 net. Skipped across, Ooh. shot loose, still bouncing around. And the Raiders are able to take possession of it for a moment, but right back. And they're not out of the clear just yet. Burn Burton fighting for the puck, 48 seconds left. Behind the U32 net, Edwards trying to find it and now still in the way. Here's Pembroke, 
Chloe Pembroke trying to go cross ice, has it knocked away. Still loose. Here come the Raiders now on the far side. Pembroke trying to pick it up. And that's gonna go all the way down to 27 seconds. A quick, probably last line change here before the end of regulation. Burn Burton with the puck. Coming around the near side. Swarmed by some Raider defense. Look out and loose and no shot yet. Pembroke trying to go with a loose shot. The second chance opportunity and saved by Kuroto right in front of the Raider net with 9.7. My goodness. No matter the result tonight, Addy Croto, you can take a bow. My goodness, she has been phenomenal. So 9.7 seconds, if you're the Raiders, you have to imagine here, you just want to get it out of the zone. And a whistle blown, so we'll Try and do things all over again. Eight seconds left. Going to get a shot here. Nice save by Kronos. Three. And that will do it for the regulation here. And getting a little chippy on the far side. Referees gonna say that even though that clock went off, they're gonna send a player to the penalty box for the start of the overtime. And right in front of us, a couple of players kind of banging into each other. Didn't like it right there was Lagerstedt. I think she kind of got bumped into and she kind of pushed down one of the Burn Burton players. And we saw for a moment there Kaitlyn Downey went over and had a couple of words with Lagerstead and said, hey, you can't do that. Probably in a little bit less nice way, but that's how we're going to say it up here. And for now, though, one to one, it will get a very short break, three minutes. And when we come back, the start of overtime, a good one here between Burn Burton and U32 on CVTSport.net. Welcome back here to the start of overtime at the Civic Center. U32 and Burn Burton in an old time barn burner. One goal apiece. 
U32 score early on in the first period. Burr and Burton picked up the power play goal in the second period. And then numerous opportunities for both sides in the rest of the way, but nobody has been able to get that beautiful last goal to put themselves in the win column just yet. But as we were just talking about up here, it is golden goal. Now, something to uh, talk to you about, Caitlin. There was a penalty at the end of regulation that originally was put up there. As of right now, I don't see time on the clock for any penalty. I'm not sure if they're gonna put it back up. It looks like only four skaters, on, okay, there it is, yep. So four skaters on the ice for U32 on a bit of a big, actually not a bit of a, a big mistake at the end of regulation, just some pure frustration that now puts the Raiders down a, a skater. Yeah, um, for right now, like the Raiders, your whole goal is to ice it, especially in overtime. You just wanna kill the penalty and then try and score. So we'll see if the Raiders can do just that. Right now, Burn Burton into the Raiders' side, but the Raiders trying to ice it there. Couldn't quite get it out of the zone. But this time, all the way back over the midway line. Over to the far side, it's Edwards. Edwards working on Trench. Trying to get around Trench, trying to stop that one. Is this one back towards the middle line? 114 on that power play. Coming inside, off to the left, some good stick work. Slots it across, nice save. Another big glove stop with 105 left to go in the penalty, 405 in overtime. That shot came in there from Brownlee, the freshman, who's also had her name called quite a few times tonight. Puck skipped around, knocked off the side. Calling for it, but good job to find the loose or the free girl on that side. Able to get over there before it was too much damage. Tried to go off the boards, but comes right back. And still in that Raiders zone. Ooh. Downey, inside, couple of players hit the deck. Whistle blows. That'll be another penalty, and it'll be on Gabby Crookshin. And... I believe. We'll see here as player down on the ice. So we'll step aside for a short break here. We're gonna allow the player down on the ice to just take a few moments. We'll step aside when we come back more overtime action. An exciting one between U32 and Burn Burn on CVTSport.net. Prom season is just around the corner, and Tuxtown Ooh, has the expertise and wide selection of styles and colors to help you look your best. Tuxtown has been outfitting area and high schoolers from Spalding, Williamstown, Montpelier, U32, and Randolph for over a decade. Getting your prom or wedding tux doesn't have to be stressful. Let Tanya Lewis help make your special occasion planning fun. Call or text to schedule your appointment today. 802-498-5531. Tuckstown, your local formal wear specialist.
Do you have scrap metal taking up space in your home, business, or job site? Whether you're a contractor, electrician, manufacturer, service garage, or homeowner, Bulldog Metal Recycling is your local recycling expert helping clean up junk piles, keeping Vermont green, and putting green in your wallet. Bring your big or small scrap metal load to them on Bulldog Road in Middlesex, where their three scales and professional staff will help you recycle it. Their roll-off containers come in a variety of sizes for one-time or ongoing scrap metal collection. They buy and recycle copper, brass, steel, wire, pipe, lead-acid batteries, cars, appliances, and more. They're contractor-friendly with years of experience and provide project walkthroughs. Let their team handle your site cleanup or demo. Bulldogs also has storage containers in 20 or 40-foot lengths for rent or purchase. Perfect for keeping your valuable items out of the elements, safe, and close at hand. For more information, visit BulldogMetalRecycling.com. Their name is their website, and as always, Bulldog Metal Recycling says... Thanks a ton. This game was made possible by Tournament Specialties, Central Vermont's corporate and team apparel specialists. If you are looking for an updated look for your business or want the latest look for your sports team, Tournament Specialties is the place to contact. Along with their embroidery and ink decorating services, they also work with groups who want a storefront to sell their items. A great way to fundraise without upfront cost and risk. Email Jeff at Tournament Specialties to learn more. Tournament Designs at gmail.com. Welcome back, everyone. Apologize for the short delay, but the injured player forced us to take a short moment. It was a burn, burn player down, but once again, kind of off under their own power enough to get themselves off the ice. So good to see that. But U32 now down two players, shot on net, saved by Croto off the rebound. This is where U32 has to kill this for at least another 15 seconds to get that fourth player back out onto the ice. Yep. Puck skipped around. And you really can't chase right now because then if you get out of there, then they got a high chance of scoring. And... Whistle will stop play there. Two seconds left on the first penalty and a minute 29 on the second one. The first one is up, U32 now only down a skater. So now this is where you'll probably see them go back to that box formation like Caitlin talked about. This is where we get our beautiful help from a former player like Caitlin. Right in front of the U32 net, here's a shot, skipped up and over the top. No good along the boards now, under a minute left to go on the power play. U32 just trying to kill it. Here's a dangerous shot though, and Croto covers it up. She blocked it down with the chest protector and then 
was able to get in front of it and get a glove over it before it dribbled out of the crease there. Excuse me. But another big time play from Croto. Off the penalty, or excuse me, the face off, my apologies. Oof. U32 still on the defensive side now. Far side shot on net, no good. Second chance, no good. There it is, though. Finds the side netting. And with 37 seconds left in overtime, the golden goal comes for Burn Burton. And in overtime, uh, the hero of that one We'll see in just a moment. And a wild sequence of events. So the final score, two to one. And before we depart, we're gonna step aside for a short break. When we come back, we'll bring you the player of the game and we will wrap things up from the Civic Center. But boy, oh boy, what a fantastic hockey game we had here. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in just a few moments. Welcome back here as the player of the game honors. First things first, so it's gonna go to Abigail Kopek, the forward senior, senior forward who had that game winning goal. Congratulations, lifting the Bulldogs over the Raiders and a very impressive game from both sides. And Caitlin, I think if you're U32, obviously you're disappointed, but you can't be too upset with a performance. You take a very talented team after a tough game just the other day, and you make a lot of new things happen. What are your final thoughts? I think overall it was a pretty uh, evenly matched game, and they both fought till the end, to say the least, especially going into overtime. Well, thank you very much again. We appreciate you joining us, Caitlin. We appreciate everyone for taking time out of their day to tune in to tonight's broadcast. And for now, it is Noah McLean saying stay safe, stay dry, and good night, everybody.
Prom season is just around the corner, this and Tuckstown has, has the expertise and wide selection of styles and colors to, to help you net, look your, your best. Video Tuckstown has been like outfitting area high schoolers from Spalding, Williamstown, CBT, Montpelier, U32, and Randolph for over a decade. Getting your prom or wedding tux doesn't have to be stressful. Let Tanya Lewis help make your special occasion planning fun. Call or text to schedule your appointment today. 802-498-5531. Tuckstown, your My local formal wear specialist. Daddy.